All right, predictions for East versus West number five. First match, Ryan Bowen versus Zurab. Um, Ryan looks way bigger than he did a couple of months ago, and obviously he is. I think there's a high probability that Ryan takes Zurab's hand. However, obviously taking Zurab's hand and beating him are not the same thing. I give the odds to Zurab 80% to 20%. However, I do think Ryan Bowen will put up a fairly good fight. It's not going to be easy for Zurab. Zerano versus Kalen and Chinko. I thought Kalen and Chinko looked huge. However, I, if I remember correctly, Zerano was actually heavier. I think it was 270 pounds versus 268. Uh, my money's on... Kalinichenko for this match. I think he's really, really strong, as is Zoranov. Also, Zoranov, we haven't seen compete in a couple of years. Um, I wouldn't be surprised either way on this match, though. I'll go 55-45, Kalinichenko. Justin Bishop versus Mendagas. Um, I think this is going to be very close. I think uh, Mindagas has one of the best top rolls in the world. He's super duper hard to turn inside. Not that Bishop necessarily will try to turn him inside. I think that uh, probably Mindagas will be able to take Bishop's rest. I hope Bishop wins. I'm cheering for him. And I think Bishop will be maybe slightly quicker. And if he does keep his rest, I think he'll be slightly stronger. Only slightly. But I see Mendagas most likely taking his hand and Bishop having to resort to a flop dress press. And Mendagas has been beaten with a flop dress press before by Daniel Prokupchik, amongst others. However, I don't think Bishop will have quite enough to beat him. He is not as strong as Daniel, obviously. It's going to be a close match, I believe, but I will give the odds 60-40 to Mendagas. Adam Warzynski versus Bozidar. Uh, I go Adam. He looks super strong in the hook. He's obviously heavier. Uh, Bozidar is 85 kilos. The weight cap is 95 kilos. If I believe it might be 93, actually, I think. I don't think anyone under 85 is beaten Bo or uh, Adam in the hook, and I don't think it's going to go anywhere besides the hook. If it does, I think it's because Adam top rolls, not because Bozadar top rolls. Bozadar's endurance is insane, but I go Adam. I'd be pretty surprised if Bozadar won, to be honest. And I know how strong he is. I just have that much faith in Adam. Hopefully, uh, after he beats Bozadar, I believe he most likely w will and should get a match with a elite 95-kilo guy. Or at least a 90-kilo guy. And then we have um, Oleg Petrenko versus Zurab. These guys have pulled before. I believe they're one and one. Uh, haven't seen Petrenko compete in a couple of years. He's heavier than he's been. And he says he's 30% stronger than he ever has been. Than he was at his Zlati 2019, which was his former peak shape. And if 30% is a lot. If he's actually 30% stronger, he's... For sure, without question, top 10 in the world, both hands overall. But is he actually 30% stronger? I have a hard time believing it. But I kind of went back and forth on this match. At first, I was thinking Zurab, but uh, I have to go Petrenko. He beat David Dedekian at uh, Zlati Tour 2019. That was a 210-pound Dedekian, but uh, still, I think... Uh, Zurab certainly should be easier to top roll than Dedekian was, and I don't see him being able to beat Petrenko with a flop dress press. So I give the edge 60 40 to Petrenko. Daniel Prokopchik versus Samushia. I went kind of back and forth on this one. I was going uh, Daniel for a little bit, but then I'm like, what am I thinking? Uh, of course, Samushia is going to beat him. Um, I picked Samushia to lose to Bozidar, and he surprised me, and I feel like Samushia is kind of on a comeback, so he's probably getting stronger. Also, he's got a huge weight advantage. Uh, if it's a war, Daniel might have more endurance than arguably anyone in the world. And it could be a war, but I think Samushia just has a little bit more horsepower. 
and he will be able to win this match. I'll give the odds, 60-40 to Samushia. Now this next one uh, is one of the ones I'm least sure about. Wagner Bordalalo versus Georgi Dezernov. Um, or Zerano, however you say it. Wagner is mul they're both multiple time WAF World Champions at 110 kilos. Wagner won in like 07 or 08 up until 2000. Maybe he probably won three or four times in the succeeding years after that, successive years after that. Um, Zerano probably won three or four times, maybe five times between 110 and 100 kilos. Right now, Wagner is 333 pounds. Zeranov is 270. Uh, Wagner did get one win on Ermes in their super match, although overall it was fairly convincing for Ermes. Zeranov hasn't pulled in a couple of years. I'm really 50-50 on this one. I think I'll give the slight edge to Zeranov because I believe he is the better arm wrestler, the quicker arm wrestler, and I think he has a high chance of taking Wagner's hand. And I... I, it's possible he could, but I don't think Wagner will be able to flop wrist press through him. Usually he's not really much of a flop wrist presser. He's more only good if he gets, if he's able to keep his rest. So I'll go 55-45 Zeranov. I think it won't be a sweep either way. It's going to be back and forth. I could see if Wagner gets a pin or two on him, Zeranov's arm may be getting slightly hurt. And him not being able to get the get his quick hits anymore and, and losing. But um, I think due to speed, I will give Zeranov the edge. This next one I'm fairly uncertain about. Uh, Paul Lin versus Arakli Gamtanidze. I don't know Arakli super well. I watched a bunch of videos of his. I kind of went back and forth. Hmm. I'm going to go... Really, it's 50-50. I was going to go Rockley, but then I started thinking Paul Lynn. I'm going to go... I hope Paul Lynn wins. Let's see. I'll go... I got to go Rockley. I'll pick Rockley on this one. I think it's going to be a war. John Brzezink versus Oleg. I think this is 50-50. I think that Oleg is coming in... He seems to be coming in very confident and very strong. According to his own word. We haven't seen him compete in three years. But John is John. He did lose to Angerbaev. This is a completely different style, though. Oleg's more about power versus Angerbaev is powerful, of course, but more about speed and has a completely different style. Um, and I think John's probably more motivated after losing to Angerbaev. So I'm going to go 55 45 John. I think if it goes in the hook, Petrenko's too strong, but I think that John can take his rest. Even though Oleg did say the 30% strength he added to himself was everywhere, including his rest, I still just don't think it will be enough. Ravaz versus Morozov. Rav Ravaz is bigger, but Morozov looked huge in the press conference when he flexed, his arm was ginormous. But I think that uh, his wrist won't be enough, and I think Ravaz will be able to roll him. Ravaz says he's at 80% of his uh, potential right now, or his peak strength. And last time when he beat Derek Smith, he was only 60%. And when he beat Michael Todd, he was only 40%. So he's supposedly significantly stronger than when he beat Michael Todd. I don't know if I completely agree with those numbers, because that seems a little bit weird. But I do go Ravaz. 65-35. Dave Chafee versus Ermes. I think this is almost 50-50. Um, a lot of people have been saying this, and I thought this all along. If Dave loses, whoever loses their rest is done. I think it'll come down to whoever is not top rolled. I think that uh, if Dave loses his rest, he will not be able to flop wrist press through Ermes as he did with Vitaly. It's a different style. Ermi's arm is stronger than Vitaly's. He'll be able to hold the flop wrist better. Plus, he was training for Jerry Cataret, and Jerry Cataret's flop wrist press is still, I would say, significantly stronger than Dave's. At least marginally stronger. And if he was training and preparing for that, he certainly should be ready for Dave Chafee's flop wrist press. But with that being said, I think it's going to come down to the top roll. Whoever doesn't lose their rest is going to win. I would give the slight edge to Ermes. It is extremely hard to say because 
we haven't seen Ermy's pull since I think February or maybe it was April when he pulled uh Gennady and he lost or he beat Gennady and since then he's added significant strength in the gym and he's added size will that translate to the table and how much will it translate to the table that's really the question Dave Chafee does look as the strongest he's looked in years it's going to be great that's one of the matches I'm most excited for obviously um, Cobra Rhodes versus Hadar Gildil. Really, it's hard to say because I haven't seen Cobra compete in a couple of years. And when he did compete a couple of years ago, he didn't look great. I mean, he looked okay. That's Michigan State. But he wasn't really training for that. I don't know how hard he trained for this. Haydar just won the Grandmasters Division 154 at WAF. I would hope Cobra would be able to win that class too. I can't say for 100%. I hope Cobra wins, but I'm going to go with Hadar. That's going to be down to Hadar's rest, I believe. If he can stop Cobra's top roll, he can win. He probably has more horsepower. This one I'm very unsure about, and that's Matt Mask versus uh, Sandras. Matt looks insane right now. Everyone's talking about how much stronger he is since he got his life straight. Uh... But Sandras just won WAF, and he looks really strong. Like, I was picking Sandras for sure. But after seeing how how big Mask looks and how big his forearm is, which obviously doesn't mean everything, I started to lean towards Mask. And then thinking about well, yeah, how easy he beat Krazy, and then Krazy won WAF. I mean... I don't want to say anything disrespectful. Uh... I mean, I don't think Krazy is really close to Sandra's level just overall, but still, anyone that can just smash Krazy like Mask did is like way up there. Um, I don't know. I say 50 50 on this one. I did place money on Sandra's, but if I had to pick, this is the one match I won't pick. I'll say 50 50. I think that Mask is really going to come in strong and he's really going to hit hard. Even if you take Sanders' wrist, though, Sanders can fight from any position. And if he loses his wrist but stops the match, he does still have a chance. So, 50-50. Ermes versus Morozov. I think uh, I give the slight edge to Ermes. Obviously, it should be top roll versus hook, most likely. Morozov could try the top roll, but I don't think he will. And I don't know, I hope he is, and I'm going to assume he is, because I haven't heard anything, but I don't know if he will be 100% after his match with uh, Dadikian. And then Devin versus Prunik. I'm going to be a hypocrite here. I, You can judge a little bit from practice, but I usually say not to judge too much from it. But I will say, based off their practice poll, that uh, Devin has to be the favorite. Um, that being said, I didn't see Prudnik try to hook in that practice pole, and I think his best and probably only chance will be a hook. And also, he is way quicker than Devin, and they didn't do ready goes in practice. However, I would give the odds to Devin 75-25, uh, and I think the score will be 3-1. I think Prudnik will get one, probably the first round, but if it stops anywhere on the table, I think Devin obviously will, will win. And Prunik does have really good endurance too. He put on some size, which I think could decrease his endurance, as it usually almost always does. However, as good of endurance as Prunik has, obviously I do not think his endurance is going to match Devin. So I picked Devin Larratt in this match. I do have a money. I have money on Prunik. I was given two to one odds, so I did make this bet with two to one odds. I think that's okay bet, but uh, I would still pick Devin if I had to pick 100%.